my heart go ting a ling a ling I remember that song being the soundtrack of my early childhood. Way back when my mother used to call me Arole, and I used to answer her with a yes, mama, I am coming, but that was long before I grew these two melons. <laughs> before I bled blood monthly in cycles of cramps and frustration, before I became addicted to perms and <coughs> relaxation, before father time decided to make me a woman before my time, that was long before I grew too full of myself too ashamed of my mother's heritage. I remember at an early age, elementary, having the audacity to tell my mother that she was no longer allowed to call me Arole in public, ashamed of this complication and dialect, but now that there's no one to call me, what will I answer to when they ask me, excuse me, but who are you and where have you come from? How will I tell them of my country back home? Ghana and Liberia, Accra and Morovia. How will I describe the sweet taste of cassava and soup? The buggy and GB, how will I lay down the foundation of my early childhood games? Not full, counting, counting, carefree, untied, shoelaces on brown ankles. Young gals like my mother bearing black babies, too dark to see their futures, and forced to carry them around on aching backs, rocking old lapas held together by knots and pins, too weak to hold stubborn infants like me. How will I tell them of my mother's warlike bravery? She carried me strong, nine months too long, if you ask me, dancing, ducking and weaving when soldiers decided to hold grenades against their own people. Man, the beautiful fashion of my native women, my crew village, their music, has all become a song so unfamiliar to me, I seem to have forgotten the lyrics. My purpose here, my mother's sacrifice. I was barely three years old when I was shipped on wings. I flew across the Atlantic and landed in New York City. Land of dreams. That's when my mother's nightmare began. See, because as I grew older, I began to drift apart from her. My abandoned African history was stitched beneath Jordans and name brands. They became my new obsession, my urgency to blend in assimilation, and able me to remember anything. I was slowly destroying myself while causing my mother pain like stitches never really go away and she never really told me but I knew it. See I failed to realize that those expensive clothes still could not cover up my voyage and no matter how hard I tried to sound more Americanized, words like hello and home always seemed to expose my status as a visitor. I failed to realize that this white land filled with white hands could never fully properly hold my name high like the queen that I am. Comfort. Arole would always be missing syllables, hiding at the back of their tongues like bad words our mothers want us never to say. Self-inflicted pain, I was slowly destroying myself while causing my mother pain like stitches. They never really go away, she never really told me, but I knew it. I saw it, I felt it. The distance between her and me, Africa and America, was becoming too unbearable for me to carry, so I wrote her an apology letter, apologizing for all the years that I have robbed her of her motherhood, begging her to please consider taking me back as her daughter, last night, I wrote to my mother an apology letter, signed, Indole.